Welcome to the Debit This, Credit That podcast with Wheeler Accountants located in San Jose, California. In this podcast, we discuss how to solve accounting challenges in both your personal life and your business. We take an energetic, tech-savvy approach to solving accounting challenges that steal your focus and your time. Now, on to the show with your tech-savvy accounting experts, Matt Wheeler and Michael Bryant. Hi, Michael. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for having me today. Uh, you're very, very welcome. It's nice for you to be on. Now, this podcast opportunity uh, with Top Advisor uh, Radio, the goal here is for people to get to know who you are and really what makes you tick, not just personally, but also professionally. So why don't you tell us a story about how did you actually become an accountant? You know, it's a funny story. I was in uh, college and I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And uh, so I majored in business and I was taking my lower division uh, business courses and I was in my accounting, my first accounting course. And the professor there was a great professor and the material really stuck. And he said, you know, you should really think about a career in accounting. And I said, yeah, yeah, no, I think I'm going to be more marketing. I don't want to be stuck behind a desk all day. And um, he said, okay. And then my next uh, accounting course, he's like, no, really, you should think about a career in this. And so he set me up with an audit partner from Pricewaterhouse. And that audit partner told me about the day in the life of an auditor and getting to interact with people, uh, see how different businesses operate, um, and and really just be able to um, be involved in in a high level of accounting really early on in your career. And that really fascinated me. And so I continued with my accounting courses and it really stuck and I really enjoyed it. And uh, here I am today. Fantastic. What does being an audit partner mean and how does that translate into what your favorite kind of client is? So an audit partner means is that I go out and um, look at financial statements of companies and nonprofit organizations. I work with a wide variety of clients. Um, I do um, nonprofits with gr gross receipts of $2 million or more. I work with tech companies and uh, construction companies and manufacturing companies. And really, I just, I enjoy working with people. I enjoy solving accounting problems and really educating best practices and new accounting pronouncements. And so clients that are, um, that interact and that are open to uh, learning more about accounting are really my favorite types of clients. What are your goals? What do you hope to achieve, not just in the near future, but in your distant future? You know, my top goal is really around service. I, service to my family, service to my community through volunteer projects, uh, service to my clients, and then service to my partners and my staff at Wheeler. Well, that's fantastic. Being service-minded is, is absolutely wonderful. And speaking of wonderful, what is the best advice you feel you've ever received? I'd have to say that luck favors those with a plan. Wow, that was okay. Where'd that come from? I was expecting that to be a little <laughs> bit longer. That was really succinct, man. I love that. Um, but uh, explain where where did you where did you hear that for the first time? You, you know, I think it's really kind of a constant theme that probably started with my mom. Um, and then my accounting professor and, and even my wife, we talk about it all the time, is, is we develop plans. We develop plans for our family. I develop plans for, for um, my career. And so it just, um, it, it just kind of came about, and I can't really pin it on one person, but I would say that it's really just a constant theme in my life. Well, name something that most people don't know about you or would be surprised to find out. Well, I kind of have a funny story about that. Um, I would say that most people don't know that I won my wife over with a drink coaster. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Elaborate on that. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> so I was very into my wife, but 
um, she took some convincing to uh, want to date me. And so we were friends at the time, and we went out with two other friends, a guy and a girl. And uh, the waitress came over, and she uh, took our drink order, and she had set down two coasters, and she had put them in front of both of the men. And so I just casually switched them over and put them in front of the women. And for some reason, that won my wife over. She said from that time on, she knew that I was the one. (laughs) (laughs) That's wonderful. Huh? That's fantastic. What's one thing people should know about either being an auditor or an accountant and their advice that you don't think the general public knows or really understands? You know what I find oftentimes is when um, organizations and companies are making decisions about selecting an auditor, they don't know about peer review and a peer review report. And so um, peer review is every three years, our firm is reviewed by another outside independent CPA firm. And they come in and look at our system of quality control and look at the engagements that we perform to make sure that we are meeting um, our high standards. And so then we are issued a report on that. And um, if it's a pass report, that's the highest that you can receive. And if you're looking at an auditor um, that does not have a pass report, then you should really understand the circumstances of why they had the deficiencies or, or the possible failure before actually making a decision on an auditor. Okay, you're going to have to unpack that more. Uh, I think you just kind of wet our whistle on what that truly means. So, <laughs> I mean, so you're talking about a pass, right, which is awesome. So there isn't like a, you can't get like an A plus, or is that what a pass is? <laughs> that pass is an A plus. Okay, that, that's, awesome. That's the grade that you want. That That's what you're <laughs> looking for when reviewing a peer review report. So with a peer review report and, and basically with an overall audit, uh, is it always a bad thing for you to find mistakes? I mean, isn't doesn't that mean that, that the the company might have an opportunity to grow or are these huge red flags? No, for a company, they, you know, I believe in constant improvement. We always have room for improvement and there will be adjustments and there will be recommendations. And um, those are really the value adds that we can bring to the audit is um, looking at internal controls and the way that companies are doing processes and possibly recommend more efficient ways or stronger controls to reduce um, the potential of fraud and other risks in the financial statements. Okay. That does make more sense. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a gift. Uh, and this is one of my favorite parts of, of this podcast because um, as, as anybody who does podcasts or anybody who's interviewed, they always hope that they will be able to get the undivided attention of pretty much the whole world. And I'm going to give you that gift right now. And I can't really necessarily deliver on that gift, but Philosophically, if you had the undivided attention of everyone in the world for 30 seconds, what would you say? I'd say, everybody give me a dollar. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I would say... (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) I haven't heard that one yet, man. That's great. (laughs) I would actually say, do more for others than others do for you, and the world would be a better place. Yeah, well, I'm into that, brother. What's your idea of success? So when you think of success... Who comes to mind? What comes to mind? Just how do you think about success? You know, I look at success as having a fulfilling career, a strong family involvement, excellent health, uh, make a difference in my community. And and really, my leading example in my life uh, is my grandpa. You know, he's 90 years old right now, and he's traveling the world. Um, He had a successful real estate company. We have a large, close family, and he's actively involved in charitable organizations. So that's really my inspiration. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Well, so now we're going to rubber meets the road here. So if somebody wants to contact you, what is the best way for them to reach out? Uh, Definitely email michael at wheelercpa.com. Or give me a call the old-fashioned way, 408-252-1800, extension 235. And if I'm in the office, I'm going to pick up the phone. Wonderful. Okay, can you give us uh, both the email one more time and the phone number one more time? Yes, it's uh, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, at wheelercpa.com. And my phone number is 408 252 
1800 extension 235. Magnificent. Uh, what's your website? Website is www.wheelercpa.com. Fantastic. All right. Any other parting words that you think our listeners should know either about you or your firm? Uh, Wheeler accountants are focused on solving accounting problems. So we really enjoy getting our hands dirty. Um, and we work in a, a strong team environment to, uh, to, for the success of our clients. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Michael. Thank you, Matt. This has been Matthew Halloran with Michael Bryant, an audit partner at Wheeler and Accountants. And remember, a simple action cannot just change your life, but can also change the world.